Hi everyone. So this Bulbasaur planter is not my own idea, and it actually started as a 3D printed project. It became so popular that Nintendo actually filed copyright infringement against many people trying to sell the product. I definitely think this is one of the best Pokemon fan DIYs out there, but remember to only make it for your own personal use or as a gift. I decided to give mine a twist by turning it into a self-watering planter. My inspiration were these adorable self-watering planters from Japan. A while back I actually bought one from firebox.com to see how it works. The tongue is made from felt fabric which simply transports the water into the base of the plant pot. I also had a very special type of clay that I wanted to test out for this project. It's a new mineral clay from Japan that you can glaze and fire using a normal oven. Making ceramic clay DIYs normally require a lot of special equipment, and you might have done this in school, but this is almost impossible to replicate at home. That's why I was so excited to see this new brand of clay, and do I even need to mention that they have the most insanely cute koala mascot in existence. I've linked everything down below, so just check the description box if you want to try it out yourself. I also bought a small succulent from a local garden shop. These are cheap and easy to find. To get started, just take out a piece of clay and then roll and flatten it so it's about as wide as the plant pot. Wrap this around the pot and trim the end so you have a container that's big enough for the plant. Of course, you can also use other types of heavy clay for this project, like polymer clay or cold porcelain. However, don't use air dry paper clay because those aren't water resistant and it might get moldy after a while. Next, take a second chunk of clay and shape it into Bulbasaur's head. Cut out a tongue shape from thick card and then carefully push this through the face. Then remove the plant pot and add some more clay so you fill up the base of the cup. I'm working very roughly at this point and I'm not worrying about it looking messy. Part of the joy of sculpting is being able to use your instinct and your fingers to create and refine shapes. I find this is a much nicer way to work than rolling clay into a perfect thickness or trying to cut it into exact lengths. Cut out a chunk from the side of the planter so you can attach the head. Then add more clay for the feet. At this point you can start refining the overall shape. I noticed that the planter felt a bit too large, so I simply removed a big chunk of clay from the back and re-sculpted the body. The head should be the largest part of this planter, so always keep an eye on the proportions. Then use the handle of a teaspoon to make some indents for the eyes. Now I'm working more carefully and trying to get the shapes looking as smooth and symmetrical as possible. Use some water to smooth down the clay and keep turning the piece as you work so you can check that it looks good from all angles. You can remove the tongue briefly to work on the face, but be sure to reinsert the card before leaving it to dry. And lastly, make a simple water dish by flattening a ball of clay and adding a rope around the edge. I also added another piece of card just to make the mouth slot a bit wider. Now leave both of these to dry completely, which can take 7 to 10 days. If you're using polymer clay, then you can simply bake it now according to package instructions. Once the clay has dried, it will look something like this. The clay is still very fragile, so be careful not to drop or knock it. If you want to glaze it, then do it now. You can get cute colored glazes from the same koala brand, which I've linked below. Then line an oven-proof dish with foil and place your pieces inside. Heat the oven to 170 degrees Celsius or 340 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 40 minutes. When you take it out of the oven, be sure to let everything cool down completely, which can take up to an hour. So this is where I made a mistake in this DIY because I forgot to glaze the clay before firing it. If you glaze everything properly, it will create a fully waterproof surface, just like real ceramics. However, I didn't want to risk firing this a second time, so I decided to scrap the glaze and use acrylic paint instead. I simply mixed some green and painted the entire planter. Regardless of whether you're using paint or glaze, be sure to cover all the small areas like the inside of the mouth. Then I painted the water dish to look like a pokeball. Or you can also call it a pokeball. After the paint is fully dry, I decided to glaze it with glue to make it more water resistant. I simply painted white PVA glue over the top which turns transparent when dry. 
I decided to use a thin kitchen sponge for the tongue instead of felt fabric since this can absorb more water. Simply trace the tongue shape onto the sponge and then extend it so it covers the base of the planter. Then cut this out, trim it and slide it into the mouth. Next, depot the succulent and carefully plant it inside the pot. It's best to do this the following day where all your paint and glaze will be fully dry. And lastly, just fill up your water dish and your self-watering Bulbasaur planter is done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please subscribe to Cute Life Hacks. We're trying to reach 500,000 subscribers which will unlock a huge giveaway. By the way, the music from this video was a Pokemon Jazz remix by the incredible YouTuber Insane in the Rain Music. I've linked this channel down below so please go check that out if you like video game remixes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!